we'll start off with Fernando. Fernando, go ahead. Um, hey, Coach. Uh, if, now that you've won, kind of got a little bit of time to uh, and the bye week. Uh, what have you? What are your initial thoughts about Justin and kind of the way he performed uh, during his four starts? Uh, like I've said all along, I think he continues to improve every week. Uh, and can, as we can uh, continue the season, is if he can continue that trend of completion percentage and staying uh, in the pocket and making those big time throws, uh, I think he's only going to get better from here. What do you feel like your offense needs to do to uh, to get better going into this final or this next stretch of the season? Uh, I think in general, I think we got to score uh, points. I think that's the name of the game, score more points than the other team. Uh, we got to continue to score and we got to keep drives going. Uh, we had some uh, drives that stalled out last week and uh, we got to continue to keep those drives going and score points. Do you guys feel like you've picked it up a little bit? I mean, at the beginning of the season, you guys scored 16 points. Then against Kansas City, it was like 19. Do you feel like slowly but surely you guys are picking it up in the points? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, it's, it's been going up every week. But we got to continue that trend, though, uh, going forward. Thank you, Shane. Thanks, Fernando. Michael. Hey, Coach, just wanted to get your initial thoughts on the Jaguars' defense. Obviously, this is a much younger team than it was a year ago. There's no more A.J. Bouye, no Clays Campbell. Yannick Ngakwe is now in Minnesota. Just your thoughts on, on what you see, and, and then especially in terms of those young playmakers like their rookie Caleb on Chase and C.J. Henderson, and then a second, uh, second-year player Josh Allen. Right. I mean, you look at their defense in a whole. I mean, what really stands out is they play with a lot of energy. Uh, they're a tough football team. They run around. They fly around. Um, so it's going to be a heck of a challenge for us. I, th I think in, in, as an overall defense in general, like I said, they do a lot of good things um, and we got to be ready to go. And this is just uh, out of curiosity. How much do you script, if at all, coming out of the third quarter to, to kind of get the offense back into a rhythm and to just get them back in the flow of things. Yeah, that's a, that halftime adjustments. We go in there and talk through things and uh, we go in the locker room and talk about what we're going to come out with in the second half and we go from there. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dennis. Hey Shane, um, the lack of scoring by the unit in the third quarter, is that more the other team making adjustments like you guys at halftime? Uh, I don't think it's so much that I think we just got to execute as a whole. You know, there are certain plays that popped up that we were close. Um, you know, that first drive, we made the third down conversion and then we ran a play action and they covered it pretty good. And then it got us into a second and 10 situation. Then, go, then we got a third down and we we're out of it. But uh, I, I think, I think we just got to continue uh, to grow and uh, keep improving every week. Thank you, coach. Thanks. Paul. Hey Shane, J just with Justin's development, I don't know if anyone really expected him to, to play as well as he has given the circumstances, given the abbreviated off season and, and the lack of time on the field. What has allowed him to develop as quickly as he has mentally in terms of learning how to play quarterback in the NFL through these first four starts? I think the biggest thing is, is his work ethic. I mean, he comes to work every day wanting to learn, wanting to get better. Uh, Coach Pep and Rip Sierra senior assistant work really well with him. Um, and, and we continue just to try to go through every little detail that's going to come up in the game, whether it's a check or whatever it is, just make sure we're always on it. So if it does come up in the game, he's prepared for it, and he's been doing a heck of a job uh, with that. I mean, he's obviously a really intelligent person. You know, I, in the pre-draft process, you hear about the 4.0 GPA and you know, biology major and all that kind of stuff. Um, but in terms of his football IQ, how, how have you seen that develop? And, and just the general intelligence that we have, how important is that to being able to grasp information and then process on the field? Yeah, 100%. I, I think the, the best players that ever played this game have a, have a common sense and a feel element for the game. They can just see it really well. And obviously him being at six, you know, five, six, six, uh, just to see the field. I mean, he can see it well. He has good vision with his eyes. Uh, he knows where defenders are going to be the timing with the receiver sitting him in certain windows. Uh, we work on it obviously in practice, but he's got a great feel for the game in, in, in general sense. And then and just about how about his ability just to like grasp and process information. And you know, obviously it's really important to be able to do that at the quarterback position, but is, have you noticed that trait about him during your time working with him so far? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you rep something over and over again and you see certain looks over and over again, and you're going to be, become more comfortable uh, in the system. And obviously, from a defensive standpoint, seeing different looks, watching so much film uh, that he does, I mean, you get a good feel for what they're doing on defense, and then the game starts to slow down a little bit, and it can become a little easier for you uh, when you know what the defense is doing. And obviously, you have a good grasp of the system offensively. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Bob.
Joe. Shane, first down production, I think, in terms of uh, first down success rate and everything, you guys are near the bottom of the league and around 30, 32%. Just what can you guys do on first down to kind of stay up to date and not get behind against the chains? Yeah, I think uh, as we looked at it in the bye week, there are certain things that we looked at that we can start uh, drive starting plays uh, to help us there. Uh, so we looked through that from a self-scout uh, self -scout standpoint uh, during the bye week. Uh, so we have some things to improve there um, that we like going forward. How much of it? How much of it has been just injuries and personnel at the moment that you guys have kind of spaced second and third longs? Yeah, I don't. I don't ever blame anything on injuries. I mean, the guys we got, those guys step up and they're playing hard. Uh, so we're excited about the guys we got in there. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Joe. Gilbert. Yeah, Shane. Uh, what can uh, Joe Reed improve on? Uh, to be active on game days? Um, he's continuing every week. He's getting better, receiver. Um, so we're excited about where he's at. He's progressing every week. Um, so we're doing a nice job with him, especially in the classroom and then coming out individual routes, drills and all that. So we're excited about that. Could it also be part of it that you guys have now plenty of depth at wide receiver with, with Tyron and, and Jalen and, and KJ? Yeah, I, know, I mean, it's a comp I mean, those guys are all competing every day. Every day you come into work, it's an interview. Um, and those guys are doing a heck of a job, and they're competing every day. It's a friendly competition, uh, and practice is competitive with that group of wide receivers, and we're excited about all those guys. And, and last year, it seemed like you guys struggled to get that third receiver, and now you have maybe four or five guys. Is that just the receivers improving, or is that Justin Herbert being able to kind of distribute the ball well? I think it's both, but those guys are improving every day. I mean, they work at it. I mean, it's no surprise that, you know, Tyron Johnson and JG, they've been working through training camp and you, you go watch them out and practice. Those guys practice hard. Um, so that's where it comes from. When you practice hard and you're dedicated to your craft, you're going to continue to improve as a player. Thank you, Shane. Thanks. Cam. Hey, hey, Coach, uh, you talk about self-scouting uh, your, your offensive side of the ball. Uh, talk about your running backs and kind of what you've seen from them and then what you want to see from them moving forward and some of the things you want to see improve, improve on in this stretch of games. Yeah, yeah, no, J.J., as we know, he's that shifty back, and we like where he's at. He, he's crafty to find those holes. And then also he had some power rushes uh, against New Orleans where he got hit and dragged a few guys. Uh, so we like where he's at. And then obviously JK is continuing to improve every week. Uh, again, he's a good hard runner. And, uh, and then obviously Buster, uh, he's got the wiggle and shake. And then uh, those guys, they're all, they're all improving every week. Uh, we like where they're at. And continue, oh, uh, continue to work with those guys and get better every week. Uh, Manuel. Hey coach, uh, kind of similar question, but um, how do you feel uh, Guyton has been playing the season? How he's been developing as a kind of a third option? So I don't. Sorry, I didn't hear. Where are you at? I'm um, right here. Um, so how, how do you feel uh, John Guyton's been playing this season? How he's kind of developed into like a third option? So I didn't. Who's that? What name? Uh, Jalen Guyton. How he's been playing this season? Oh, he's been doing yeah. a heck of a job. I mean, he's created some big plays for us. Um, he obviously caught the big one against Tampa Bay, and then the big one. Uh, on Monday night against New Orleans. But again, he's another guy that works at his craft uh, and continues to prove every week as a route runner. And uh, he'll continue to get more and more opportunities uh, as we go along. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you, Pop. Hi, uh, Shane. Just in recent years, as the league has become more, more pass happy, I guess in the last decade plus, you know, there's been in, in recent years, it's particularly in the analytics community, sort of this the idea to pass more on early downs. It's more, it's a more efficient way to run your offense. What's your general philosophy on, you know, that idea of passing more on early downs versus, you know, having more balanced load? Yeah, I think, I think a big part of it depends on the team you're playing. Um, I think you can go and do when you're studying an opponent uh, saying, hey, shoot, we can get some things on first down in the pass game, or we might go into a game saying, hey, the run game looks good on first, second down because of what they're presenting on defense. So I think that's more than anything is what they're going to do defensively. Uh, we'll have your offensive scheme on what you're thinking on first, second down. Thanks. Thanks. Michael. Hey, Coach, uh, with defense coordinator Gus Bradley, we kind of know his his scheme identity, right? It's a cover three heavy scheme. Um, he's got his own specific positions, the Leo and the Otto. And I just wanted to give that kind of question for you. In your own words, how would you describe uh, your offensive identity and how you want to win within your own scheme? 
Well, I think uh, we want to run the football. Um, and then also our play action pass game comes off the run. Um, the chunk plays, some of those chunk plays we've hit uh, without getting into too much detail. Um, I think that's part of it right now. And then obviously we continue to grow every week and, and, and morph into really, really what we're trying to get done um, offensively every week, uh, week in and week out. And like I said, it, it, and things could be tweaked here and there every week uh, by who we're playing defensively. All right, Shane, last one for you. Cam, go ahead. Hey, Shane, I just wanted to talk about um, your process of creating chemistry within your offensive line. Obviously, there's been some changes, a lot of guys in and out moving around. But how do you go about creating that chemistry with the offensive line? Is that just in game action, or how do you guys do that? Well, it's really – it starts in practice and in the classroom. I mean, there's a lot of communication that goes on on a daily basis with those guys. And then, obviously, you get the individual period with the offensive line. And Coach Campen does a heck of a job with those guys, uh, getting them ready week in and week out with the rotations that are happening. And, again, it, it's a lot of communication that goes on. And uh, everyone's got to be on the same page because, obviously, if one guy is off just a little bit, it could screw up the whole play. So, uh, the communication part's big, and it starts in the classroom and then out on the practice field. All right. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate the right. time. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Shane. All right, guys. We'll see you down at the field.